So we know that we've had a, a staffing shortage for a number of years. And in, in fact, uh, here's some statistics for you. From the Euro, U.S. Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics, uh, the, the end of December is the most current numbers that we have. Nine million job openings in America, 5.6 million filled. Where did everybody go? I don't know. But here's the deal. We're missing staff. We are understaffed. The restaurant you go to that has 100 open tables but only two servers, yeah, they could sit you, but they'd never take care of you. You got to wait. In fact, here's the deal. Waiting is part of our world now, more so than it's ever been before. At a restaurant, at an automotive shop, go to the local, uh, any, any local bistro, go to uh, your doctor, go to the vet with your dog. It doesn't, you're going to wait. And in fact, here's, here's, my, here's my broken heart. Same day service, which I cut my teeth on nearly three decades ago. We've always prided ourselves on getting that car in, getting it out as fast as possible, same day if possible. I, I can't do anymore in many instances. My hands are tied. I don't have the staff for it. Now, let me pause here for a second. If you happen to be one of the very few blessed shop owners that has a abundance of staff and and you've got you got more people you know what to do with and they're all amazing uh to culture oriented people that just that they they get it and they want it and they have the capacity to do their job yeah this class might not be for you you can go ahead and log out and watch cartoons the rest of the day but for the rest of us that have the daily struggle yeah it's it's different now and same day service doesn't happen and here's why you see that little ball right there that's COVID. That's an actual uh, enlarged uh, picture of the COVID uh, virus. Uh, COVID has normalized the wait. Remember when you had to wait in line for, I don't know, toilet paper? Yeah. yeah. Remember when you had to wait in line for any service or product? Remember the, the supply chain issue where you couldn't get parts to fix your stove or your refrigerator because, well, they were stuck on a boat somewhere or they weren't making them in a different country and you just had to wait. And now here we are four years removed from that terrible global event, by the way, it was horrible. And yes, I did lose friends. It was not great, but it's changed the weight. It's changed the way we view waiting. And yet shop owners, advisors, managers, technicians, were still stuck in 2013. Those were great times. I missed them, but we're not there and we're likely to never be there again. So here's a question for you guys. How important do you believe speed of service is to your clients today? Now, I don't have any audio feedback and I can't hear your answers. Uh, I can tell you that it has changed. Your clients know that their cars need to be repaired. They know that they're going to wait. In fact, they wait for other things in their own life. And so I can tell you that uh, fast repairs versus quick answers and acknowledgement that's a topic I'd love to dig into if I don't have time, but I'm going to give you as much as I can here in a few seconds. Fast repairs is a terrible model, but quick answers and acknowledging your client and giving them one-on-one -on -one service, I believe is the best. And what we're about to talk about is going to allow you to do that. So here's another challenge in our industry. Is it safe to say that parts, you notice the uh, generic non-name brand parts picture I have there, uh, parts are harder to find. They're, uh, they're slower be to be delivered to your shop. It, what uh, I love to go back to the good old days when, let's say I had a brake job that I sold and I could order pads and rotors from three of my vendors at the same time. And then I would let them race and they didn't know they were in a race. And the first guy to show up with the parts I would sign for and receive his parts and the other two, they pull in my lot and I'd wave them off and say, never mind, you're too slow. Now, yeah, I did do that a few times. That's really immature and terrible. Don't do that. But I can't do that anymore because I have to wait. So it's safe to say that our supply chain is strained. There is a, there, it, our vendors are stretched thin. You see, they don't have parts drivers. They're also short on parts. We have to, yeah, let me just stop here for a second. And take a drink of coffee because what I'm about to say is critical. You'd better love on your vendors. You'd better elevate them to the highest position, honor them because they're working just as hard as you and they deserve respect. I can tell you what, man, I love my vendors and uh, I understand their challenges are my challenges. And so be very cautious when frustrations boil, when your parts don't show. So we've got stress relationships. We, we've got uh, repairs taking longer 
And and here's here's a little chart. I love this. Uh, we offer three kinds of services, right? You could read this: good, cheap, and fast. But you can only get to pick two. So if you want good and cheap, it won't be fast. You want fast and good? Well, it won't be cheap. You want cheap and fast, which is what we've tried to do for decades. Cheap and fast. The repair won't be good. It takes time to do what we do. It takes time for quality. And I'm not asking you to slow your role. I'm not asking you to drag your feet in production. I'm asking you to do it efficiently and effectively and correctly and ethically. It takes time, especially when we choose to wait for the best parts. I'm going to say that again. It takes time when we choose to wait for the best parts. So here's a question for you. I know I can't hear your answers, but I'm here to I'm here to make uh, thought provoking uh, questions uh, come to the front of the conversation. So are you ready? Have you recently made the choice to compromise parts quality for speed of service? And how did that go for you? And again, I'll keep it very generic, but uh, hey guys, you know who I'm talking about. I've got a part available today from one of my vendors, and it's the lowest quality, highest failure rate, garbage part in the world. But because speed of service, fast repairs is the most important thing, I'm going to go ahead and sell that to my client. And hey, if it fails, no big deal. It's got a warranty. You just compromised their experience. You just made the choice for them to give them a potentially substandard repair. Why would we do this? But we do. I'm here to challenge you. I think that's the wrong choice. 